들어보겠습니다. 
this lady tells me, she's like, yo, come into this room and talk to this woman. I'm like, okay. And I sit down, and Julie's like, tell me about your life. And I'm like, okay, weird woman, I got you. <laughs> and the type of person I am, I like open up to her, like, well, 1996, I, uh, <laughs> and we just go down this whole road. And then it just, it took a while for us, I mean, for me to get a little bit comfortable, but Julie and Eddie, I always say this, like, they do such a phenomenal job, like, just becoming our friends and not these people who have cameras. And it's like, I always say this, like, Julie was at my sister's last labor being her doula. And so Julie definitely knows how to put her presence known. And she'd be at family dinners. I'd be at their family dinners. So it became very like a, like, I don't know, like a family thing, yeah. you know? Eric, how did, how, did, how did your the subject of your film feel about you? Oh, <laughs> I think we talked about this yeah. originally because um, I didn't know Liz, who is the blind dancer, um, at all. I knew Lauren, and I called Liz immediately, almost the, I think the same day. And I was like, I know you don't know me, but <laughs> can I film you? <laughs> um, and she said, she said yes, and I was like, I thank you for thinking I'm not a crazy person. <laughs> like, you've never met me. Um, and yeah, that's wow. it was it was kismet. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I have a question for Caroline. Uh, there's a scene uh, in the film where you're speaking to a group of students in the classroom, and yeah, that uh, scene. <clears throat> yeah, and this and and one of the students kind of makes some comments um, that I I what? thought you'd be yeah, insulted yeah. by, and you you approached really it in a very calm way. How did you kind of feel about that happening at that moment with the cameras on you, and you, how were you able to sort of keep your you want my honest answer? Yeah. Tell me. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to kill him. <laughs> but of course, I wasn't going to do that on camera. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, the thing about being, you know, having Julie behind me at all times was the fact that I fear for my vulnerability to be seen as a weakness. Uh, that's why I asked her at one point to stop the filming. Yeah. There was one point when I stopped filming, I did not get in contact with Julie for a couple of months. Uh, it took me a lot of strength to contact her again until we can keep going. Mm -hmm. But with that particular student, uh, the thing about that high school is that my freshman year, I was bullied by the boys. I guess I felt threatened with my presence, mostly because I used to dress better than them. <clears throat> <laughs> so I felt threatened, right? Uh, that particular guy, he, oh, he always made comments, silly comments about gay people and mm. homosexuality. And as their, not their teacher, but as someone that, that, that was, you know, guiding them on the right path, I felt the necessity to come up in front of the camera and correct him because my point was not to belittle his opinion because right. we're an American, you can think whatever you want, yeah. but if you're going to talk bad on homosexual people, at least call them at the right name. <laughs> do, not, do not insult my people, you know, because that's, that's a little insulting to my community and the people that I stand up for. And I'm Dominican as well, he is so, so he made me feel a little bit embarrassed and my people yeah. have this kind of mindset. Uh, the thing that did not come on camera though was the fact that he came and apologized to me uh, yeah. after, uh, you know, after I had a conversation with him. He came and said that he's sorry. He never did it again. So uh, yeah. I was beyond proud that he finally got the hint. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Cool. That's great. That's great. Um, Enoch, did you face any sort of adversity in, during the process of sort of trying to guide students? Well, I mean, I felt I feel like the the hardest part was like I guess reaching out to people that we normally didn't communicate with because we we knew that we were like our senior class like growing up and then there's like other kids that we have to associate ourselves with and it's like I guess breaking those barriers with like meeting meeting students that aren't comfortable with you so mm -hmm. I mean that was like the hard part for me like trying to help someone who doesn't really know me but that yeah. we try to take the friendly approach like you know like yo like what type of yogurt you like you know like <laughs> stuff like that and then they like seem to open up so yeah right 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 uh, and Eric um, how does Liz feel now that you're doing festivals now and screening the film in public does she, is she okay with this like is she yeah no we actually screened it at the Arkansas School for the Blind um, she couldn't come to that but there was a little 11 year old girl who came up um, who was blind and was a dancer and she she was just kind of came up to me and she like started mumbling things and I was like I don't know what she's saying and then I leaned in closer she's like blindness doesn't define me hmm. and I was like that Made the, the made the whole film worthwhile for me just mm -hmm. to have a little girl say that, yeah, <laughs> you know. But Liz, yeah, it's I think it's kind of over, overwhelming for Liz and Lauren, both of them, to see themselves on film. And actually, I'm curious, like seeing yourselves on film has, it's always it kind of sheds. It's a weird meta thing that happens, right? I don't know. It's like um, it's like. It's like 
just witnessing like on the big screen and then like I don't know you it's, you get a moment to reflect on like all the stuff you've been through I always say it's like a therapeutic process because mm-hmm. you're like oh wow this 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 thing is like really rough that I went through and like she's been through so much and then you look back and like we conquered that shit you know so <laughs> so like let's keep moving forward yeah. it's pretty cool it's pretty cool. I love it Do, uh, does anybody have any questions uh, oh yeah go ahead. Oh. I have never been back to Smith. <laughs> After that, I said, see you later, and never came back. I don't know anything about them. I don't know if they know anything about me. Uh, Julie, you not might yet. Have, we have not yet screened at Smith. And if that happens, I'm not going. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Any other? Yes. I, I, I have a microphone. Um, I mean, I, th- I think uh, Julie could speak more about the shooting. I, I shot some of it, but she shot most of it. I think just being there all the time, we, you know, or a lot of times, and knowing kind of when to be there and when to show up, you know, when um, you know when notices are going to come in the mail thing or email things like that. But I think as far as my role constructing the story, I mean, you can have a lot of footage that can do a lot of different things, and I think part of it is. Um, Trying to under, I said this at the last screening. Try, you know, getting a college acceptance is kind of a cliche moment, right? You know, a lot of people, you know, experience it. I mean, we all kind of know about it. It's like on TV shows and things like that. But trying to really get behind what it means um, in a individual specific way, not just yay, I got into a good school or mm, I didn't get in, but really understanding like the complexities and like the the resonance behind, you know. Um, what it means for each of them differently, but also similarly, and kind of playing that that those melodies against each other, so that we really understand um, as best as we can in a film, because a film is a very very thin slice of you know real people who are who are on stage, but just trying to put the film in the point of view of of the two of them. I'm also a first generation college kid um, from the Bronx, and so I think I had a lot of shared experience. I didn't have nearly as much guidance as you guys did. Um, um, and I flat spun as a senior as well. Um, so I also understood what it meant to be on like the precipice of having help or not. So I think also my personal experience, being able to understand and empathize with what they were going, you know, um, helped as well. And it, yes? Yes, sir. That's one of my majors. Uh, I don't know if I can remember. I mean, I'm very nervous right now. I don't know if you guys are reading my body language. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm low-key shaking, but I'm keeping it on the low <laughs> so you guys don't notice. But I'm extremely nervous. But yes, I, I am doing a double major in theater and uh, English literature, poetry. Yes. I just want to say, uh, I just want to say that I'm from a very different generation, but in my high school, I was the only gay kid. I had a target on my back. Be proud. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that. Yeah. We have any, oh, go ahead. Don't look at me. You can start with your <laughs> All right. So I would say the month-long, like, intense program that we went on to be youth leaders, the care, the care program, um, that kind of, like, prepped me to, like, I guess step out of my comfort zone as much as I possibly can because I love doing it. It's, like, super, super cool. So when I got to college, um, it, I realized there's, like, certain things that I would have never seen myself doing. Like, I don't know. Like, I guess I joined an intramural volleyball team one time. And I'm like, it's gonna be. I did, and I was like, it's gonna be super, super corny, and it was so much fun. Even though like we lost every game because I suck at volleyball, but I feel like the the whole program like just prepped me for like I guess 
the you, things you can't expect. So I, that's one thing. And then like becoming a, like a student, I guess I'm always I can't fail in my mind. I don't want to fail. It's not in my blood. Not to quote Sean Mendez, but like I don't want to do it. So <laughs> the whole that that program was super super intense, and it, and it was like it seemed like it was forcing so much on us, and it it like kind I prepped us very well for school. Is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. You won't you won't fail. You, you're awake? I'm awake, I'm awake. This is like my son. I don't know if you guys know. <laughs> but I'm like the mother of the group. She definitely Because like, I'm the most strict one of the group. Yeah, she gives By me the way, like... Carolyn, you point. mentioned you're uh, major but, in, in uh, theater, right? As, in college, you're in, major in theater. Yes. Did, were you inspired at all into getting into filmmaking after going through this this process? Uh, yeah. It was like she being part of the film that, that told me, hey, I'm very dramatic. I think it runs <laughs> on my blood. So I might as well just take a shot at theater. And I've been doing pretty good so far. I, I don't know what my professors might say behind my back, but... So far, I'm doing pretty good. But uh, to respond to your question, I think that uh, being part of the program, having that job, it actually made me more inspired to go to college because uh, I say this everywhere, but I wasn't going to go to college. That was not my intention. Even though I had the best example, because everybody in my family went to college. My aunt graduated. My mother, who is here tonight, she had me. She stopped going to college when she had me. And after being, like, what, 40, she went back to college and she graduated not so long ago. So. I always had that example, but when I came here to the United States, I was like, I am not going to have more stress in my life. I don't need college. College doesn't need me. We do not get along. <laughs> Being part of the program and doing the job, because it was kind of ironic, why am I telling kids to go to college if I don't want to go to college myself? Mm -hmm. It is so ironic. But it made me think that, you know, college in America, it is a necessity if you want to survive. And although my success was framed differently, um, I felt like I needed it to prove a point. I went to a community college to prove a point, to Part, members of my family and to everybody out there who says that kids that go to community college are not going to make it anywhere. I graduated with 3.8 GPA. Can't nobody tell me that I didn't make it anywhere, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, just being part of the process, he taught me to be determined and, and responsible and that we don't, you know, we don't get all the things that we want in life, but that doesn't mean that you're less of a human being or that you're less deserving. And I feel like I'm teaching a lot of more kids how to do that, to not focus on the flower's necessity of, of needing water, but on the water's necessity to, to give life, you know what I mean? And yeah, I feel like it, that, that's just my, my, my goal right now, to, yeah. keep, to let kids out there know that okay. it's okay to fail. Yeah. You know, you just gotta get back up. I think we, we have time for one more question. Anybody? Yes, go ahead. Yes, sure. Mm -hmm. I'm only 21, it's <laughs> okay. <laughs> So much. Yep. Thank you very much. We really appreciate that. I just want to um, take a minute to say to do two things. First, I just want to let you all know that we are, you know, using the film uh, to raise awareness of the college counseling gap in this country, and we'd love to give you our postcards and ask you to go to our website and fill out our really short survey. We're looking for input. Who should see this film? How can we maximize the impact that it can have? This is not just a New York City problem. This is a countrywide problem. The average counselor to student ratio in the country is 1 to 482. Those school counselors say that they can spend 22% of their time on average on college counseling. And most public schools don't have anyone who's called a college counselor at all. And so we're trying to use the film to, you know, raise awareness of the fact that, like, right now we are making it way too hard. And 95% of all students in the country say they want to go to college, and only 16% of low-income students are getting a, a college degree. And Part of the reason why that's happening is because we're not providing the college counseling that we need to. So we would love for you to sort of join us in our work to try to uh, encourage more funding for more college counseling in public schools. And then secondly, there are a bunch of people here who contributed to this film in really important ways who I want to call out. 
Um, so Juno Rune is here who wrote yeah. the song that you hear at the end of the film. Can you, do you mind standing up so people can? <laughs> And Philip Elliott or Eli Brooklyn, can you stand up? He, he sings in the song at the end of the film. I see him coming. And then um, Tom Effinger and Abby Savage are here who did incredible magical work on the sound design and sound editing and sound mix from Red Hook Post. They're amazing. Did I miss anybody who's here? We're really happy that you're all here. Oh, Darren is here. Darren Kwan, who did a bunch of shooting and helped with some assistant editing also at the beginning, but he did just shooting at the city council scene that you saw. Do you stand up, Darren? Thank you, thank you. And Judd Blaze, an assistant editor who helps out me out all the time, is here too. <laughs> so we're, we're really so happy that you um, were all here. Thank you so much. I just want to ask uh, Eric. Uh, and uh, Juliana and Edwin, if you could just tell us um, where we can see the film next, any more festival screenings, it's going to be released, um, anything like that? Yeah, um, it, the net, we're in an online contest right now. It's called It's a Short. You can vote every day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, there's a 24-hour like gap. Um, but anyways, yeah, go on vote every day. It's We're one of 16 festivals. I think we're like in fifth place now for that so we have two more weeks um i too want to call kaya rose she helped edit without a mirror mm -hmm. and i think pedro was here who was the gaffer and assistant camera and i don't know if my other the other co-editor is here michaela zarbafian but i think he might have been anyways mm -hmm. um but yes thank you so okay so thank you to julian dresner and martinez enoch caroline eric mann oh can i just yes. say where people can see it yeah sorry yes, also yes, for yes, ours yes, too yes. okay so personal statement um you can tell all your friends to watch it on PBS. It's going to be locally in New York on November 27th at 8 p.m. It's a short version of the film that's being broadcast, but also uh, right now you can get the long version on iTunes and Amazon. And um, we have an educational distributor, so if you know of any educators, schools, universities that might want to show it to their uh, students or use it as an advocacy tool, it's available by um, Good Docs. If you go to our website, you can see how to get it. I hope so. <laughs> also, thank you to you guys for hosting and sharing this space. It's so important to see independent film. Um, it really means a lot. There's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that goes into this. Um, so thank you for creating a space to share these amazing stories. It's huge. So thank you. Thank you, and thank you to you guys. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you.